so the judge that eventually granted you your freedom was Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. And I don't think she had ever done that in her entire ever. career, huh? Ever. And yeah. she's not a new judge either. No, nah, that was OJ's preliminary hearing judge. You have a lot of your your case stuff, documents, transcripts, uh, all of that still saved in order to. I have I have everything. Matter of fact, I just got uh, everything. All my discovery, I just got it from Alex. He had it in a warehouse. A couple boxes, man. I got tapes. I got CDs. I got so much stuff, man. Now you mentioned uh, Angel Valencia and Renee Enriquez. I've actually heard Rene Enriquez testify in court against other people. They brought him once to a, the prelim, not for me, for my co-defendant. Some of these other guys weren't as fortunate as you to beat your case. Maybe they didn't have a great, good a lawyer as you did. Um, well, he made a statement. He, 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 he put himself where he's at. He made a statement uh, about his involvement or whatever. Um, so rule number one, man, you don't make no statement, man. They get afraid and, and they, they start thinking that the detectives are going to help them and they don't realize that the detectives are pretty much yeah. reeling, reeling them in and, and then boom, they turn on them. That's what they did. They, they did him dirty, man. They turned on him. As soon as he made, made a statement, boom, they, they, they cuffed him. And, well, the next day, the next day he came in, I think, and they, they cuffed him and, and that was it, man. And the way that you initially got arrested for this case, and let's just remind everyone, this is a murder that happened 10 years before. 1998. 1998. So in 2008, they, the, they show up at your uh, probation, parole officer. Parole office. Once they started talking about that, they, offer, they were going to offer me my freedom. They try to hit me with, with some, uh, I, don't, I don't think it came out on our first interview, but they try to tell me that I had a green light on my life, and they try to scare me, and, and then they, they told me, look, uh, we're here to, we're, you know, we got you, man, but, but if you work with us, we won't arrest you, man. Just, you know, work with us. And uh, they offered me my freedom, man, and, you know, I told them I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't got nothing to say. And uh, they, they cuffed me, man, and, and that was it. Spent the next five years in jail, man, fighting that case. And you fought that case along with Lalo Martinez, right? Yeah, I had, uh, I had two co-defendants. Well... It was five code offense. It was it was five that were part of the case. The the first dude pled guilty in 2002, I believe. That was their main witness, I guess, in the case. And then uh, uh, it was Martinez and Garvey. Those were the guys that were part of me. And then there was one uncharged co-conspirator, and he uh, they they used they didn't use him in the case. They, he didn't testify or nothing. And, and Garvey is Capone. Garvey is Capone, yeah. Okay, so when you were going to court, did they eventually separate you guys out as defendants? Well, I went pro per, and uh, the Judge Bowers, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with him, I believe 105 uh, in CCB Department 105, he didn't want that to interfere with their, their uh, proceedings, so he separated me. That ended up being a blessing. He severed our our cases it was still the same case same case number but i was being tried separately and th those them two were being tried together and just for everyone to know uh, judge bowers is the only black judge on the ninth floor at that time he wears a bow tie he plays hardball man and especially if you're a pro per he came after me but if it backfired on him he came after me so hard that i had enough evidence in the transcripts to get uh um, taken out of his courtroom, and I landed in Kathleen's courtroom, which ended up being a blessing, man. Did you ever hear from any of your, your co-defendants after you beat your case? Like, how did you do it? Maybe did, were you telling? You know, <laughs> all, all the rumors that come well, about. There, there's people that probably thought, you know, that, that I've, I've heard that, you know what I mean? But I don't care. My, my case is public record. Anybody that knows me knows I ain't never, you know, went that route. Even as a Christian, I still don't see it as, as something that I'd, I'd be able to do, man. I, it, it, it's, you know, it's just something that's been embedded. And, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I believe in, in, in the law. I believe, you know, we need, we need justice, man. We need uh, uh, people 
you know, patrolling our, our streets, man, and, and all that. But as far as uh, working with them and all that, like that's, that's, that's something that's not, uh, you know, at least for me. But yeah, there's people that thought about that, that you know, oh, what's the, you know, who did he tell on or what did he do? But my case is public, man. I got case law on why I got out and how I got out, you know? How fast, how long after your conviction was Alex Kessel able to find this case law and, and get to the point where Kathleen Kennedy is dismissing the whole case? How much time had passed from the conviction? From the conviction up until he found the case law was probably about 10 months. You were pro per, but you didn't have any money for an attorney, but eventually you got some money and you're interviewing lawyers. I'm interviewing all the top-notch lawyers. How many inter lawyers did you interview and what made you pick on Alex Kessel? Someone had Alex Kessel, an Armenian guy, and he told me, do you want a good attorney? You get Alex Kessel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I still remember to this day and, and it stuck with me. And, uh, and his co-defendants had all the other top attorneys, Flyer, I believe he's uh, Andrew Flyer, uh, uh, Bill Pittman. I interviewed all of those guys. Normally my case, and because it was a high profile case, Normally, it would be around a 75 to 100,000 100, uh, G's, man. And uh, he took my case for 35. And I didn't have the money. He took it. Uh, and, and once again, man, I just, I, that was a miracle, bro. I prayed. And that money was provided, man. That money was provided. Um, and I didn't have no money, man. It was, it was a blessing. There was a couple of those times where he did that. Alex did that. He goes, you know what? I don't know why, man, but I'm. I'm gonna take your your case for it, you know, and I'm gonna give it to you for this much. So he, it was a blessing, man. It was a blessing. All right, let's talk about this this idea of snitching, telling, informing, cooperating, whatever you want to call it. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net.